Church, welcome and welcome back. We just want to welcome you back. Today we are talking about John 4, 1 through 44. We are going to be speaking of the lady at the well this morning. So we're just going to dig straight into the word this morning. We're going to get jump right into it. Ephesians 6, 12 through 20. We are going to put this, uh, Lord, we're asking that you cover us with the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask that you open our eyes, our ears, and our heart to the word this morning. And we ask that you cover us with the armor, the full armor of God this morning. And we just invite you in, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit this morning. And we pray that you pray this over you and your family as I pray this over us. So just receive this this morning. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Therefore, having gritted your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the sandals of, of the gospel of preparation of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen to that, Lord. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful till this end with perseverance and supplication for the saints. Amen. And for me, that the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am you are ambassadors and chains, that in it we ought to speak boldly as we ought to. Amen, Lord. We just... Woo! We receive you this morning, Lord. Once again, Lord, I just pray that you will open our eyes, our ears, and our heart to your word this morning, Lord. Um, minister this word to us. Let's read it, and let's dig into it, and let's discuss the lady at the well. This is a very beautiful story. Uh, uh, verse 4, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John... Though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed. He left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied from his journey, set by this well, it was about the sixth hour. And a woman of Samaria came to, to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. So he sent his disciples to go buy some food. And he was alone at the well and the lady came to the well and then he asked the lady, well, give me a drink. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Not only was she a Samaritan, she was a woman. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other. It's kind of like the, the Mexican people. I can say this because I'm, Hisp I'm Hispanic, Latino, an American. I was born and raised here, but my grandma and grandpa were from Mexico, and my mom and dad were born here. So I speak Spanish. I speak very poorly Spanish, but when I speak, they ask me where I'm from. And when I tell them that I'm, you know, I'm a Mexican, they let me know plain as day, you are not a Mexican. You are an American. You were born here. So people from Mexico don't like us Americans that come from Mexico that are born here. Isn't that ridiculous? Uh, they'll let you know that we are not a part of them and their culture. Um, that happened to me here lately. So, then the woman said to him, How is it that you being a Jew drink from me, a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans? Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get 
that living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob? She's asking. Who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. He's speaking of the Holy Spirit here. He's saying the water that I give you is living water. It's eternal water. It's life. It is the Holy Spirit upon salvation that comes in you and lives in you and gives you this eternal water. It's an everlasting water that will spring up a fountain in you. Amen to that, Lord. So receive the word this morning. Let the living water drink his water, the Holy Spirit. Consume it. Receive it this morning. Receive his word. Believe what you are hearing this morning. This is an evangelistic word this morning. This is a beautiful word to minister this morning. And it gives you everlasting water, a fountain of water, the Holy Spirit. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have said, well, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you have is not your husband. So the one you're with is not your husband, and that you spoke truly. So you spoke the truth here. God is saying, the not only do you not have a husband, the man that you're with is not your husband, but you have had five husbands. So this lady has had five husbands, and the current man she's with is not even her husband. It is a man that she is shacking up with. And how bad is that? Because this lady here had five husbands and is going on the sixth husband already. Can she not see that she needs the Lord Jesus Christ? She needs the Savior in her life. Amen to that. Because for you have had five husbands, and the one who you have now is not your husband. This you have spoken the truth. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem... And Jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship. Jesus answered and said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Amen and amen to that. Salvation was sent to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. Aren't you glad for that? Because I am not a Jew. We are Gentiles. And salvation comes to the Jew first and then the Gentile. Amen. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that you accept us and that you believe in us and that you have given salvation through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Jew and the Gentile. And we are speaking of the Gentiles because we are Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Woo, Father. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. So, how do we come to God this morning? We come to God like, you know, let's, let's pray right now. You know, Father, we come to You, we just bow our head, Lord and prostrate in front of you and come to you and speak to you from the heart, Lord. We pray this morning, Lord, that, that there are children, your children, who this word will minister to. And let us see the word this morning. Let us see the evangelism. Let us see the lady who is living in sin, in adultery, fornication, uh, man after man, uh, husband after husband, never respecting the marriage of man and woman between uh, one couple, not five couples going on the sixth husband. Ladies, I'm sorry, but men, 
you cannot go through men one, two, three, four, five, six and counting. Um, you know, I'm sorry to say this, but men like women with low body counts, and women probably like men with low body counts. You know, so we have to stop being uh, just prostrating ourselves around there, just having sex with whoever or whatever, or maybe you have a boyfriend for years and you have sex with him or girlfriend. Man, God designed marriage. So when you're living outside of sin and you're having sex and all that, you know, with boyfriends and girlfriends and living together and shacking up and moving from this guy to this guy or this girl to this girl, you know, it's talking about the lady, but how many men do we have that sleep around with a bunch of women just like this, have more than five or six, you know? So it's not just women, it is also the men. But women, you are the ones that are in control. You're the ones that go through men and have high body counts and then later on in life, you have children from different men. You have, uh, men, you are looking, you finally realize that you want to settle down and not live in every day of this world and you want to have a family and settle down and, and, and you cannot do that because you have so many children from so many men so many different fathers and guys may like you and your body but guys don't like it when they have four kids and three or four of them are, are different daddies and now they come into the picture and they're raising four different men's children uh, you can hate on me you can call it one one it, it is not the ladies faults only it is both the men and the women because the men are the ones that are talking the women into doing that. And as soon as they have sex with you ladies, they act like they don't even know you anymore. And you know I'm telling the truth, and women are the same way. Hey, they'll call a guy up and have sex with him, and he's just a, a fun date for that night. So it goes both ways. And that's what we're talking about, and that's what she has went through all these men, and look at the life that she's had, and the Lord is like, hey, you've had five. You're on your sixth husband. Amen. You know, so we have to realize, we have to come to and realize that, you know, a spouse is a good thing. It is a good thing, but not spouses, a spouse. One individual that we we depend on and, and have our faith in and believe in and, and is our spouse who we come to love and adore and we want to be with them and only them, not them and every other woman or man of faith. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, the Lord, the Father, God. There's a lot of y'all that don't even know that because a lot of y'all only believe in God and don't believe in Jesus. So you are praying to the God, but you're not praying to God the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not because God the Father has a son by the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. If your God in heaven, the one God, does not have a son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that comes from him, then our God is not the same God. One of our gods is a false God, and you're going to say it's me, and I'll let you say whatever you want to say. We know who the Father, the Son is. We serve the Father of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Amen and amen. And we are even speaking of Jacob as we speak right now. Verse 23. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking for such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I will drill this in you. I will tell you this and I will read it twice just like I did. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called the Christ. So Messiah is the Christ to come. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Woo! Jesus just told her that he can give her living water. I am the living water. 
I give this flow of living water in you, which is the Holy Spirit through through uh, salvation. And he who speaks to you, I am he. I am the Messiah, the one who is to come. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking to her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, okay guys, this is getting good now. Check it out here. So the lady got ministered to at the well by Jesus Christ. He even, I'm going to say even like prophesies over her because he told her about her five, six, five husbands and the one that she's with is not a husband, right? And he told her that the people to come to seek Jesus, I mean God, the Father, need to come in spirit and truth. And we come in spirit and truth to worship him. And God is a spirit. Amen, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory be to God this morning. Woo! Then, verse 30, then they went out of the city and they came to him. So this lady went to back to the city of Samaria and she is evangelizing. That's the best way to say it, right? And then it says they went out of the city and then they came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. And he is speaking of the bread of life, the word that he just ministered to the lady at the well. Amen, Father. Amen. Woo! And then Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So see, the food is to do the will and the purpose and the plan. Me and you like to eat. But are we giving his food to people who need to eat? We like to eat. But are we giving his food? His food is for people that need to eat. And we all need to eat because we need the energy so his food is is nutrition for our soul amen that's the best way to put it verse 35 do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest behold i say to you lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white ready to harvest and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life. Amen. So eternal life. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this is the saying is true. One sows and another one reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. See? 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 Right now, we're ministering this word to you. But people have already planted seed in you and have been watering the seed. If this word is ministering to you, it is not I. Of course, it is the word that's ministering. But it is the Lord Jesus Christ who sent people like us to minister the word. Preachers, man, preaching the word. Evangelizing the word. Co-workers speaking about the goodness of God. The co-workers and, and people sharing their testimonies of God. And that's what he's saying right here. We... We say, and, and this is true, one reaps what another one sows. So today, this morning, Lord, we are asking that we you open our eyes, our ears, and our heart, and that we plant and water the, your children this morning, Lord, that you plant and water, and that you reap the harvest. And if you allow us to reap the harvest, we reap the harvest. But you're the harvester, Lord. Amen, Father. And verse 39, Woo! hallelujah, hallelujah. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed in him. What did they do? Many people of the Samaritans of the city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. Because of the woman. See, when you go around telling people about Jesus Christ, your testimony, what he did, this lady knew nothing. And she got ministered at the well. And the very words that she got ministered, she went and told. She would have said, this man prophesied. Can you just imagine? This man prophesied. He even knows my five husbands knew their name. I mean, he knew everything. If he knew that she had five husbands, he knew, he knew their names. If he knows, God knows. Amen. And he was able to tell it. And she went out evangelizing. And as she was evangelizing, she is proclaiming the word of God. And as she is proclaiming the word of God, 
the word is piercing their hearts. And then they came to him. Remember it says they came to him. Woo! And I'm going to read it one more time. And many of the Samaritans of the city believed in him because the word of the woman who testified, her testimony, he told me all that I ever did. Woo! So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed with them two days. And many more believed on his word, on his own word. They said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, evangelizing the truth, for we ourselves have heard, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. right here dude ladies then they said to the woman now we believe not because of what you have said but but what you have said is true and it, it intrigued us and we believed you but we didn't believe you so we came over here to hear the word for ourselves and to witness this for ourselves and to believe his word for ourselves Woo! oh man so we have not believed because of what you said but we have heard him and we know that this is indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. So this lady went and ministered to the city of Samaria and the Samaritans hated the Jews and Jews, uh, the God of Isaac, Abraham and Jacob is the God of the Jews and the God of the Gentiles. So she, he's introducing her, man, this is beautiful, Lord. So they got witness, and who she couldn't witness to, they called the big guns, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ, and they all came to him, and then he ministered to them, and he probably prayed over them and spoke the word to them and ministered to them, and they came to believe because of what he said. She started it by putting the fire, going around opening her big mouth telling everybody oh this man he done this he knows this he knows all that I've ever done come and see so in verse 33 now after the two days he departed from there and went to Galilee for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country amen and amen to that so who are you going and telling how Jesus saved you and testifying to your salvation how you were lost and now you're found how he knows you how he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb how he breathed life into you how he has given you eternal life through his son uh, through salvation John 3 16 for God the Father so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life eternal life in him for him through him amen and amen to that so who are you ministering the word this lady was not a preacher but she got so excited she got so thrilled. Didn't it say rejoice? They rejoiced. She was rejoicing in the Lord. She was asking questions. What is this water? Give me this water that, you, that gives eternal life, that, gives, uh, that flows through a flowing river, a rushing river that flows through you, and that is the Holy Spirit. She's like, give me this water because I come for this water every day and I thirst. If you give me that water, I don't have to come over here every day and thirst. And she is right because it is a eternal living water that comes in through you and you only get that through salvation. So repent, get on your knees, ask God to come into your heart. Who are you going to go and minister his word? Who who what city, what town, what people are you going to go minister to who that were lost? and are now found because they have heard the word and received the word with joy rejoicing and salvation has come upon them amen amen to that Lord so Lord we just want to thank you for this word this morning we want to thank you for the lady at the well we want to thank you for the beautiful testimonies of, of 
that the lady at the well that it brings us because we can look at this we can look at it and unfortunately it's like women we can't be going through man after man after man at some point men will not even want you you will be there's two types of women out there there's women who are who, who uh, that we want to marry the kind that you want to bring home to mama and then there's the kind that you want to take to the club and you want to call her after the club uh, just for, uh, you know, for fun. So, we don't want to be like that. We don't want you ladies to be like that because men are, are can be evil. They can use you for your body and not for anything else. And that does nothing for you. And if they were to get you pregnant, now you have a kid from a man that you had a one night stand with. You know, so we just ask God. But God, God is your father, though, because there's lots of ladies like that. There's lots of men that have done that to them. That does not that saying anything negative. All we're saying is, don't let the men take advantage of you, because men will take advantage of you. And ladies don't take advantage of men because in today's society it used to be the man, but today it's probably about a 60-40, I would say. So, once again, thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come minister the Word of God to you this morning. And may you go into your town in your surrounding area and evangelize. And His Word, His truth will penetrate the heart. You are planting and sowing and watering and that is what we do and the Lord reaps the harvest and he is the Lord of the harvest the Lord of hosts is our God the Father Elohim his son the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit the Ghost the Holy Spirit so thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come minister the word and we pray that you stay firm planted and rooted in the word and go and evangelize look what evangelism does evangelism is just sharing your testimony what god has done for you even what read the word and if you don't have a testimony read the word the testimonies that are in the bible are beautiful testimonies and you can share these testimonies and these testimonies are actually more powerful than your testimony because these are the words of God and your testimony is powerful because what God does in you is his word as well. Peace out. We love you and we just wanted to give you a little nugget. Amen and amen to that. See you next time guys.